All right. Over the weekend, someone sent me a link to an interview that Christian apologist William Lane Craig did with Alex O'Connor. Now, I'll tell you up front, this is not a new interview, but someone sent it to me and said, you know, David, what would be interesting to see you do in some of these interviews is take one specific claim that's made by someone and just look at that one claim and whether what they cite is the premises for their beliefs are even true. So let's do it. And you tell me whether this this is interesting. What you're going to see here is that William Lane Craig is asked about the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus on Easter. What it, what evidence do we have that Jesus was dead and then came back to life? Alex O'Connor asks William Lane Craig, let's listen to what William Lane Craig says, and then we're going to pick one of these claims and examine it a little more closely. I think my listeners will, will be broadly familiar. So perhaps without going into too much depth, just bullet pointing, what are the main points of evidence that you would that you would direct people's attention to, to say these are reasons to think that a man rose from the dead on Easter morning? Um, first, I would say, what are the facts to be explained? And those would include things like the death of Jesus of Nazareth by Roman crucifixion during Passover around AD 30. Second, his burial or interment in a tomb by a member of the jo uh, Sanhedrin, the Jewish Sanhedrin named Joseph of Arimathea. Thirdly, the discovery by a group of his female followers on the Sunday morning after the crucifixion that that tomb was empty. Uh, fourth would be that thereafter various individuals and groups of people experienced appearances of Jesus alive after his death. OK, so he's going on and listing the so-called evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. So let's just take one of those things. One of the things that William Lane Craig mentions is the tomb in which Jesus had been buried after the initial crucifixion, he mentions the tomb was empty. There was Jesus was in there. And then all of a sudden, Jesus was no longer in the tomb. And this is a central element of Christian apologia of apologetics, which is he was in the tomb and then he was gone. Now, is there any evidence of that? He says, there's evidence that he was in the tomb and then he wasn't. The first important point is even if it were true that individuals came to believe at the time that where Jesus had been had been interred, he was gone. That alone doesn't prove anything. The fact that some might claim that. But my question when I hear such a claim is, is there any real historical evidence outside of sacred texts? I get that for a lot of this stuff, you can go to sacred text and find scripture that makes these claims. But is there anything outside of it? Well, you look, what are the primary sources for the supposedly empty tomb of Jesus? It's the New Testament Gospels. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They discuss they, they uh, explain they describe a, an empty tomb was found by women followers of Jesus on the first day of the week after his crucifixion. Those are religious texts. They are sacred texts. The, this is sort of like, you know, looking at marketing documents and saying, what's the proof that uh, that this drug works? Well, it's the marketing documents from the makers of the drug. A lot of us would say, well, do we have any uh, uh, randomized controlled trials, for example, that we might look at instead. So you can look at sacred texts and say, is there any overlap with uh, independently known historical information about the life of Jesus, the historicity of Jesus that that could overlap with some of this? But there is very little when you look for corroboration from non biblical sources for the empty tomb of Jesus. You have, I mean, to call it limited evidence is probably even being favorable. Now, historians and scholars do debate. Is there anything that we can find outside of Scripture to verify to verify the empty tomb? And there really isn't much. You look at Jewish and Roman sources. None of them mention in any direct way the empty tomb. You find some Christian scholars who say there are some implications. There are indirect references. You can look at the Jewish historian Josephus, who mentions uh, 
Jesus and his following and uh, 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 sort of um, uh, references the fact that some claimed within other venues about the empty tomb, but it's extraordinarily shaky. And most of it has been after the fact claimed to be indicative of the empty tomb, even though historians don't agree about that. You can look at Tacitus and other Roman historians who mentioned the execution of juice uh, of uh, Jesus by Pontius Pilate um, around uh, written around 116 AD, but it doesn't mention the resurrection. It doesn't mention the empty tomb. So you certainly don't have any kind of independent corroboration there. If you say, is there any Christian writing outside of the New Testament that talks about it, like from the church fathers, the church fathers discuss the resurrection broadly. Uh, they mention the empty tomb, but those are not non biblical historical texts. They're just Christian traditional texts that work off of the New Testament content. And then you say, well, is there archaeological evidence of the empty tomb believed to belong to Jesus? And the answer is no. Uh, there, there is no archaeological evidence there that has been accepted by archaeologists. There have been sites proposed to be this is the place. There are sites revered to be the location of the tomb, but there's been no historical confirmation. So, you know, what, when we look at these broad claims, there are really articulate apologists like William Lane Craig who just mentioned the evidence in passing and say predicated on all that was my belief in the resurrection of Jesus, which is totally a legitimate and substantiated belief. If you take one piece, the empty tomb, it's a foundational belief in the Christian resurrection of Jesus, but you can't corroborate it in any real way from non biblical sources. And we have to be super careful where uh, where they they in a in a very long list of things cite this stuff. Now we could do this with every one of the other claims that he makes for the resurrection of Jesus. But just as far as the empty tomb, when you examine it, I'm not able to find anything that that surpasses any level of scrutiny. Now, what you often get as a counterpoint from apologists is, well, a lot of this stuff goes beyond archaeological and empirical evidence. Well, then we're already operating in an area where it doesn't really matter where we can prove it. You're saying it may be so special, unique and supernatural in nature that you will never find such proof. Well, but then don't cite that you have the proof until we point out that's just from the Gospels. Uh, but that that's often part of that shifting sort of uh, moving goalpost of what evidence we would expect to find. Uh, and then when we say, well, actually, we don't have that, they go, well, it doesn't matter. It's supernatural. It's beyond belief. It requires faith. Is this interesting at all? Let me know. Can certainly do more of it uh, or can choose never to go back to it again. But uh, this was one that came up, I guess, because it recently was Easter, uh, right? I think. Um, and this interview was one year ago. Let me know what you think.